Hey YouTube and welcome to this inbox review which is a little bit of a special one for me because it's a kit that I have been after for quite a while now and just before Christmas 2019 I was able to get myself one and uh, to say that I'm pleased about it would be an understatement. Now the kit itself uh, is the Revel reboxing of the Matchbox Flower Class Corvette uh, in 172nd scale, 172. It's a kit that was, I believe, initially produced by Matchbox in England in 1979. I first saw a um, box of it in a model shop in Guildford in the Friary Centre in the early 90s and um, still in its matchbox uh, configuration at that stage uh, where it was literally just labelled as a flower class Corvette. Um, Revel have re-released it uh, several times now um, as HMCS Snowberry, uh, His Majesty's Canadian ship Snowberry and not only have they uh, obviously re-released the original kit, but they've done a couple of upgrades as well. They did a platinum edition whereby you got extra pieces in it uh, for extra detailing with, I believe, also a printed deck sheet as well. And I believe in 2018 they released a um, Technic set uh, which includes a motor and lighting for the kit itself. Now, I've got an older kit that was, I think, probably released um, in the 90s by Revel. And um, the box itself, it's, it's about two and a half feet long. Um, so I've had to just pop it onto the bench. Now, as we look around the box, on one side, uh, we we basically just have some uh, multi-language uh, information um, about the ship um, and the box art repeated. On the opposite side, we have the um, we have the paint numbers called out uh, in multi-language. Uh, they're the Humbrol numbers um, or Revel colours basically and there is also um, in multi-language uh, calling out various bits of detail on the kit itself. And then as we get further along the box there are some photographs of a finished model kit. Uh, which looks pretty good. Now, the model kit itself is um, a skill level five. You can just see that. Uh, this is the end of the part, and that's the same on the other end. The Revel kit number is 05061. However, the Matchbox kit number was PK901. And you can actually look that up on the internet. There's a um, website which lists many manufacturers model kits and you can look up and see when it was manufactured, which is why I say that this was uh, constructed in, or, or manufactured in 1979 initially. So if we open the box, So, as you can see, the box comes quite full. I have had this out already. Um, it's a second hand kit. So, but it is complete. So if we look at the instruction sheet to begin with, and I will just drop this now.
So if we look at the instruction sheets, Revel have produced a nice A4 sized um, instruction booklet. Now, what I will say is that the 1979 Matchbox release had three ship options. One for the Royal Navy, one for the Royal Canadian Navy, and one for the United States Navy. Now, the Revel have re-released this, but they have only included two options which is the uh, Canadian ship Snowberry and the United States ship uh, Saucy. Um, the Matchbox kit did the HMS Bluebell, which um, has slightly different parts, uh, which would have been called out during the instructions. <clears throat> um, however, and I will put a link in the description to uh, the site, but there is a site which has the instruction sheets from Matchbox which allow you to build HMS Bluebell because there are some differences and I'll show you those differences as we quickly walk through the instruction book. So there are health and safety warnings in multi-language, uh, some information about modelling again in multi-language, the key for the um, production notes uh, for making the kit, um, such as glue here, don't glue here, make two of, etc. We then have a full page um, of the paints, part, uh, paints list. And more importantly, it also gives the ratios for mixing certain paints to get the correct color scheme. Now, we then go into a sprue list and on the sprue list you'll see that certain items have been blocked out and these are the items which would have gone to make HMS Bluebell. So as I say there is a website which has the Bluebell instructions and it's interesting to note that when Matchbox produced the kit originally their instruction seat their colour parts or, or their paint guide was called out in colour. And you'll see that if you follow the link to the website. So again, items have been called out, uh, different items called out for the um, making uh, of Bluebell, which are no longer used in the um, ma uh, model making process here. We then get into the build and First off is the hull. It's a four part hull. Um, it does go together reasonably well. I've seen other model makers do it. Um, there has been a little bit of filling uh, for some of them, but otherwise it's not too bad. And then once we, once we go into it, it's a single screw uh, ship, uh, single rudder. And then we go into the build of the upper decks, the wheelhouse, the gun mounts, etc. Now, the kit itself isn't too bad, but it does lack detail on certain things. Certain things which I feel could have been done a lot better, such as the four inch gun could have been given more detail. The uh, 40 millimeter anti-aircraft gun could have been given better detail the Lewis guns could have been given better detail and the 20 millimeter uh, guns on the wheelhouse deck could have been given much better detail there are also some other parts which um, are lacking a little bit in definition one of them being on the gun bandstand here there are a number of ready rounds um, on deck for immediate action um, to be used when the gun is um, in use. And these aren't particularly molded well. Now, there are a number of aftermarket accessories available which um, will allow you to detail the model uh, more accurately. Um, We've got the wheelhouse, 
uh, main part of the wheelhouse here. We've got the ammunition and kit storage lockers here. We have call outs for um, hoists for the depth charges and other items. And as we continue the build, you'll see that we go into the upper deck of the wheelhouse. Now on earlier um, flower class Corvette models, uh, the wheelhouse was enclosed, but later on they decided to build it with an open uh, wheelhouse because it gave better um, all round observation when at sea and in combat. Again, there's some other, other items, things like the radar um, assembly is a bit basic. Um, on Snowberry, the radar housing, which you assemble here, um, the, the windows here are actually quite wide, whereas on pictures that I've seen of Snowberry, they are quite, there's more windows and they're thinner. So that would be something that could be modelled at a later stage. The instructions do call out where necessary. Um, the differences between Snowberry and Saucy. So for example, on the Crow's Nest, there's a, there's a difference. Again, a bit later on, there is a difference with the 40mm anti-aircraft gun mounting. There is a slight difference between Snowberry, which just has a um, framework for securing part of the mast rigging too. Um, it has a searchlight tub for Saucy. And then calling out differences for the nameplates. There's a difference in flagpole position for Saucy and Snowberry. but otherwise it's generally the same. Now, many of the differences that are called out for HMS Bluebell are um, additional storage racks side by side to the depth charge racks at the rear of the ship. There is a difference in the life raft placement for HMS Bluebell. Uh, HMS Bluebell doesn't have these life raft ramps here on the side of the ship, um, more towards the front of the ship just here. The, the life rafts are double stacked and put onto two railings uh, for Bluebell. Now, some of, the, some of the other items which aren't very well molded are things like the depth charge throwers depth charge throwers at the side of the ship. Um, the depth charges themselves are a little bit basic as well. And again, you can get aftermarket parts to up detail these to make them look better, which I may well do. Certainly, I'm going to look at trying to get some aftermarket parts for the four inch gun, the Bofors anti-aircraft uh, anti gun, and the 20 millimeter Oilerkin cannons. So at the end of the instructions, we get the model uh, painting guide for the figures. And then from there, we get the paint guides for Snowberry and Saucy. All in all, there are around about 185 listed steps in this instruction book. So if we take a quick look at the parts themselves, we'll start with the hull. So the hull comes in four parts. So you get two bow pieces, port and starboard. You then get the two stern pieces, port and starboard. And if you look at these, they're not too bad. There is a little bit of flash in one of the um, just getting that. There is a little bit of flash in one of the um, depth charge release ports at the rear of the ship, 
which will need to be tidied up but otherwise the the hull isn't too bad now on the inside of the hull I don't know if you'll be able to see it but just here it says made in and then it's uh, been scratched out and that would have said made in England uh, being a matchbox kit and obviously with Rebel being German they've removed it but on a number of parts you can still see the PK901 um, kit number so we've got the deck here now the deck itself obviously we've got guide slots for the various um, wheelhouse housing and um, upper deck portions that get glued onto it uh, as well as guide marks or um, guide lugs for the bandstand that the main armament sits on and then ammunition lockers etc the deck is done in a raised detail um, which shouldn't be too bad and hopefully once painted and weathered will look okay do now is quickly look at the clear sprue now on the clear sprue you have you have the um, octagonal shape for the saucy radar housing but then you also have the circular shape for the bluebell radar housing as well as all the porthole windows and this shape here is for the um, ship's display stand. Now, something which you do get, still do get, is, if I can get it the right way around, you get these little nameplates. You get Saucy, two for Saucy, two for Snowberry, and you still get the two for Bluebell. So if you did want to make HMS Bluebell, you've still got all the parts included in the kit. So moving on to some of the other items. So you do get some crew figures. Uh, they're not too bad. They will need a little bit of cleanup, but they should paint up quite well. So you get three the same here. You get three the same here. You then get four of these. And then you get what look like the bridge crew. Included on this particular sprue, you have the rounds for the anti-submarine hedgehog device, uh, which for want of a better description was a multi um, bomb mortar launcher that was launched towards the front of the ship in anti-submarine operations uh, and it would blanket an area um, hopefully catching a submarine that may have been to the front of uh, the vessel uh, we've then got some of the depth charge throwers there and the 40 millimeter anti-aircraft gun the Lewis gun mounts which as I said have are quite basic and we also have some other bits and pieces like the stands for the anti-aircraft 20 millimeter cannons the splinter shield uh, for some of the Lewis guns as well as some other bits and pieces including the crow's nest um, just there On this sprue, we have the forward part of the decking for the bow. Uh, we have the upper wheelhouse deck, which is the open air part of the ship. We have the two uh, rigid lifeboats. And then these parts here are the stretchers that go inside the hull to stiffen it and keep it from um, collapsing in on itself. The next sprue 
has the single screw propeller, the mast, mast ladder, the top of the funnel. Um, it also has the four inch main armament, which as you can see is quite basic in its construction, as well as a number of um, hoists, uh, deck ladders. Um, these are the uh, depth charges, which come in halves and you have to glue them together. This, these two items here um, are the uh, mounts for the depth, uh, for the hedgehog um, weapon. Uh, we have the 20 millimeter cannon there, as well as some um, piping for air shafts, etc., that would go around the ship, and grab rails for some of the ladder areas. Moving on, on this sprue we have two parts of the trim uh, that goes on the hull. Here you have parts for the additional depth charge storage on Bluebell, as well as lots of ammunition lockers and kit lockers that would populate the deck. Uh, we have parts that go into the um, upper deck of the wheelhouse and these are the ready rounds for the main armament just there. On the next sprue, again we have more lockers and um, ready ammunition storage. We have the depth charge racks. Uh, we have more parts for the depth charge racks just there. Uh, these are the side walls for the upper deck, as well as um, speech tubes and various other uh, hatches and bits and pieces. We also have, these are the sides that would be used for Saucy and Snowberry. And then these are the two variations, these two bits here are the two variations that you would use for Bluebell. And then on the next part, we have um, railing uprights. And on here, we have the radar housing for Bluebell. This gun shield here, which is curved, this one here, is for Bluebell. And this gun shield here is for Snowberry and Saucy. We also have the two halves of the rudder. Uh, ventilation funnels and various other little bits and pieces uh, for the deck. And then the final set of screws that we have this one we have the life rafts, we have the um, radar housing for Snowberry and Saucy, we have the bottom of the bandstand for the main armament. Um, this again is one of the trim vanes which goes on the hull. We have the sidings for the upper um, uh, assemblies for um, housing on the uh, hull on the deck rather. Um, these items here, these little things here with the crosses in it, these are splinter mattresses designed that if a shell exploded on the ship uh, they would stop splinters from hopefully um, incapacitating the bridge crew. And we then have the life rafts which come in two parts. Just there. I believe this is the sonar housing, which is just off the top of the wheelhouse. 
And then the final sprue we have is the bandstand, uh, the funnels. These are the sidings for the lower wheelhouse assembly. And then we have part of the upper deck main housing assembly, as well as various bulkheads with doors in. So the kit itself, for its age, though there's a little bit of flash, is actually surprisingly flash free. Um, it's going to take me a long time to build this. As I say, I am going to definitely look at getting some aftermarket parts to make uh, it's slightly more accurate and more detailed. Haven't yet decided if I'm going to go with Bluebell or Snowberry. Um, those two being my preferred uh, ships. Um, Bluebell served throughout the war until February 1945, where it was torpedoed and sunk. Um, I understand that it was sunk with... Um, only one survivor it went down very quickly unfortunately but um snowberry itself lasted throughout the war it was then returned back to the royal navy in 1945 and was decommissioned in 1947 i believe As I say, I haven't yet decided whether it's going to be Snowberry or Bluebell. Let me know what you would prefer to see in the comments below. And hopefully you'll join me on this little adventure. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye.